This is part one of a two-part summary breakdown of the video, Better Gains by Doing Less, all about smarter strength training for those over 50. Part two will be out soon, but if you'd prefer to jump into the full 20 minute deep dive video right now, it's linked below and in the pinned comment. In this video, we're going to explore training to failure, particularly in those 55 and older, and share some of the research that may in fact change the way you train. What I wanna concentrate on today is a pivotal trial that was conducted quite a number of years ago, which really opened up the Pandora's box in terms of giving context to the potential to do things differently. Now, the study in question was published by a well-known sports scientist from Spain, Fernando Parreira Blanco, I think it's pronounced. And the title of the study, which is up on your screen, was Effects of Velocity Loss during resistance training on athletic performance, strength gains, and muscle adaptations. Here is what the researchers actually did. Now, the only difference between the two groups was that the training sets were stopped once a velocity loss threshold was reached. The results showed that the group that stopped the set at around the 20% velocity loss performed half the repetitions of what they would normally do if they took that training to failure. So one group was essentially doing half the repetitions with these reps in reserve, and the other group was training often to complete failure. The concentric phase, that lifting phase of the squat exercise was performed at maximal intended velocity. What tests did the researchers actually conduct to establish the differences uh, in terms of training outcomes. Here is what the researchers actually assessed pre and post training and the tests they conducted. Strength was assessed by a one repetition maximum squat. Power had two different tests, a counter movement jump, i.e. vertical jump. There was a 20 meter sprint performance test Muscle hypertrophy was assessed by quadricep change. And finally, type 2X muscle fibers, that percent change in area was also looked at. Now, what differences did the researchers find when they compared the two different velocity loss training protocols to each other? Here's a quick snapshot of the training differences that were found following the training intervention between the two groups. Okay, let's step through some of the results. So first up is your one rep max squat. And you can see that the velocity 20% uh, group versus velocity loss of 40%, there was no differences in maximal strength improvements. Now, this is where there was a difference between groups. So the group that performed the 20% velocity loss, i.e. did half the number of reps that they could have in the set, improved their power, they were able to jump higher. Results for the change in muscle fiber area of type 2X, that percentage change in area, this showed concordance with the power results for the counter movement jump, that vertical jump that I just previously discussed. So the group that performed this higher velocity resistance training set type protocol experienced a much greater change in this fiber type area. Now that, that denotes that you're slowing the muscle down. Now, results for the 20 meter sprint are also included on this slide. Finally, let's look at the muscle mass or muscle volume changes in the quadricep muscle of the two groups. So as shown on your screen, you can see that both groups experienced good changes in muscle mass as represented by that percentage change. For the VL40 group, you're looking at a 7.7% increase. The VL20 uh, looking at 4.6% increase. When they assessed that statistically, it was significant for both groups, but between groups, there was no differences. I wanted to quickly just share some further research, just so you know, this isn't just a one-off. So this recent meta-analysis looked at a lot of the research in this area, and the essential key finding they found was that as velocity loss increased, 
the training adaptations decrease. Part two will break down what this research actually means for older adults and highlight the potential benefits you could gain. That'll be out soon, but if you'd rather jump into the full 20 minute deep dive video right now, it's linked below and in the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe to Fit Grey Strong for cutting edge research analysis and practical training advice for those over 50. See you later.